Hello, I am the connector Tracy G, and this is my guest Charles Edwin, author of Atticus. How are you doing today, I'm, Charles? I'm good. Let's call, he wants to be called Chuck, so we're yep. gonna call him Chuck. <laughs> um, so, Chuck, okay, mm -hmm. we we met at the Ferguson Books um, author signing event. Was that a month ago now? Yeah, yeah. In, uh, November, November fifth. Okay, and so both of our books, um, his book Atticus, and my book Universe are at Ferguson Books, and they're also available in, yeah, in Fargo, Grand Forks, Bismarck, through Ferguson Books, mm. and then also both of our books are on Amazon. Yeah. Also, Amazon Books. So today we are gonna talk about, just about the origins of our books, some future plans, uh, how to, you know, how to get your book out there, um, imposter syndrome, which he's gonna tell me about imposter syndrome. <laughs> and then we're also gonna talk about some social media like where to go and news, you know, new if you're new and establishing or what to do and where to put most of your energy. So anyway, so we'll just start right in. Um, so your book or origins, Atticus, mm. um, where did this book come from? <laughs> <laughs> so I originally was working on a novel called A Kid in a Slime. And I had about 20 chapters of it done, about 50,000 words. It's actually bigger than this. Okay. And but then I hit like a I hit like a wall where I wanted to change my narration style. Okay. I was doing it all third person, and then I'm like, well, now I want to go to first person. And I really got in my own head. Okay. And I started being like, I have to rewrite the whole thing, and kind of like got insecure about it and just stopped working on it. Okay. And then about a year went by, and I was like, okay, I I need to like I need to prove to myself I can make something. Right. So I decided I was going to, I had come up with two companion stories for that book. Um, one of them was called Atticus, and the other one was about a different character uh, from that story as well. And they're supposed to just be companion pieces to get more info about right. these characters. So I'm like, I'm going to do Atticus. It's one. It's the cooler idea, I think. And um, I had originally set out to just write a 20,000 word short story. That was it. That's all I wanted to do. And then I hit 20,000 and I was like, oh, like I have more to say. Right. So I kind of took that limit away and was like, just write whatever you want. And by the time I was done with it, it ended up being about 40,000 words. And, and so that's sort of how this idea came to be. Okay. And you told me there's in the back here, uh, is it the afterword? Yep. Or why okay. I wrote it. Yeah. So why you wrote it and I didn't put my glasses on, so I'll oh. let you read it. Okay. <laughs> So I'll try to summarize it because it's about two pages, uh, but it's like, why did I write this? In case you found yourself wondering, why did he write a story like this? <laughs> then look no further. Uh, so some backstory here, and I'm going to paraphrase. Um, I used to write as a kid, but I eventually just quit writing in college. Mm -hmm. To make a long story short, I would, um, my childhood friend did comics. And all of our friends liked it. And I tried to do comics and my art was really bad. So I got made fun of for my bad art. So I was like, okay, I might not be able to draw, but I bet I could do something right. else. Right. So I started writing and we sort of both were our, I don't know, the Netflix and the Hulu of the eighth grade. Because uh -huh. he would make comics and I would write stories. And that's how we entertained our friends and other people. Uh, eventually my writing or my art artistic abilities upgraded and I started doing comics. Oh, okay. <laughs> and we worked together for a while. Uh, but I still did short stories, and then I did them in college. But in college, I um, my parents wouldn't read my stuff growing up. My mm -hmm. friends did, but my parents never did. And then when I got into adulthood, nobody would read my stuff. <laughs> and so in college, I kind of did a, like, this is it. Like, either I keep going or I'm done. Right. And so I spent two weeks storyboarding. I made a 24-page comic book, did all the art, colored it all, had the entire plot. And I did it for my like final project, invited friends and family to come out with me um, to check it out, and nobody came. Oh. So I was like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> and that was, uh, that was it. Then 10 years went by, and um, my wife's aunt was overhearing a conversation I was having about a video game. And she's like, oh my gosh, this story sounds really good. Like, is this a book? And I'm like, oh no, it's a video game. She's like, oh video games. I play video games. I guess I'll never get to experience it. Uh, and I was like, and that got me thinking like, man, how many people just miss out on really good stories? Because they don't play video games. Right. Or they don't want to, or they don't want to like have the skills to. And a side note, he does have your own, is it on Twitch mm. that you, tell them what you do with the video game thing quick. Sure. So on Twitch, I stream narrative games 
for people who don't want to play video games <laughs> or don't like know how to play video games. And so I take requests or I stream story games so you can pretty much pop in for two hours, treat it like a movie, uh -huh. you know, eat some popcorn and just enjoy the story. I don't talk during any of the cutscenes. Uh -huh. And that's kind of what I do on my Twitch page so people can just experience. And what's the name of your Twitch page? Uh, it's called ChukkaQ, which is C-H-U-K-K-A-Q. And I'll put that down below. And by the way, people, I did not realize this. He has taught me so much today. Um, when you're looking at this on YouTube, um, there's a little space between, like right below where the video is. And if you click on that, this whole thing pops down and then you'll see where all of the um, connections, links are. links are. Yeah, connections, links. I'm the connector, <laughs> so I always say connection. But <laughs> so anyway, so tell me just something about this book. What is it about? Mm. So the general synopsis is that uh, the main character's name is Dr. Graham Finch. He is like a psychologist okay. and he has a manor by a lake and he, some patients come to him wanting to stay at his manor. Other ones are like issued by the state or the city and being like, you need to take this person to work on them. So he brings in patients and they live dorm style inside his manor and he has one-on-one -on -one interviews with them, is trying to help them figure out some of their problems, because some of them are there for things like imposter syndrome. <laughs> some of oh, them are okay. there for things like, um, my parents abandoned me and I'm trying to work through that past trauma. Right. Um, other ones are problem children <laughs> who caused like too many like incidents at school or at home, and right. they've been sent here to work through like their anger and problems. So he's trying to do that with people, and he's doing relatively a really good job. Um, but then one day, he starts to have these reoccurring nightmares and all I can really remember are like a pair of glowing red eyes and a dark castle. And then out of nowhere, a brand new patient just shows up, this 10 year old kid named Atticus and kind of flips his entire life on his head and makes him question everything, even things about himself. Oh, very good. Yeah. Oh. So, and <clears throat> if you want to, um, let us know if you want us to come back in a different video and I will tell you what I thought of Atticus. And, um, and then also I'm giving you my universe book by Taylor Knight. That's my pen name for all my sci-fi, futuristic, pre-apocalyptic thriller stuff, um, paranormal. This one is actually about <clears throat> quantum physics, quantum mechanics, multiverse kind of things. You know, if you go down this road, you know, if you could leap into another reality where you didn't do that, or if you did do that, how different would your life be? Um, and then they also do have a little uh, telepathic, telekinetic stuff going on. And just, it more or less delves into like, how many realities are there? You know, mm. is there really only this reality? Can we take a peek into another reality? And how would we do that? So yeah. anyway, so that's, um, and it's about two sisters and going through the apocalypse, <clears throat> and <clears throat> sorry, they uh, end up having to go to this uh, this federal facility for par uh, they're called preternaturals, which is the something the name they gave to these people that just overnight two percent of the world population got telepathic or telekinetic abilities, and it kind of just turns everything upside down. Yep. The world is in the year twenty eighty nine, so. Mm -hmm we have actually gotten our stuff together and it's actually a utopian kind of society, which you can also just see if you think that's real, you know, something that could actually happen. But if you want to see what it would maybe look like and at least put that into our social and our connected consciousness to be at that level someday, read universe and um, see what you think. But anyway, don't want to give too much away, but um, his, her sister does have an ability Instead of being telepathic and reading your mind, she can actually throw her thoughts into your mind and make you do things. And then mm. you wake up and you already did it. So she's a little oh, dangerous. Wow. <laughs> and they have, that's why she's at that, uh, that facility. Yeah. But anyway, and yeah, so anyway, there, she does have something to do with helping with this pre-apocalyptic situation that's going to mm. occur or it is occurring and they don't know what to do. So that sounds really cool. So I'm there you go. Though. So that's that one. But if you'd like to hear us, you know, do a little review of each other's books, let me know. Um, you can also go to reallyloveyourlife at gmail.com and just send me a quick little email and say, hey, yeah, I'd love to hear that. Or if there's some other topic or someone that you would like to see on on this channel, let me know. And uh, we will, we'll, I'll try to get them here. So yeah. Anyway, so, um, so how with your book, how did you, how did you get it out into the world? 
So when I was finished with it, um, I will, was starting to think about where can I put this? I want it to be on Amazon because it's a very accessible right. thing. And I started looking into how to do that. And Amazon has something called Amazon KDP, mm -hmm. which I think is Kindle Direct Publishing mm -hmm. for short. Uh, I thought it was going to be a very difficult process, and it mm -hmm. was actually extremely easy. easy. <laughs> that's that's where I do most of my books from is from KDP. They'll give you your own barcode mm. and um, ISBN number. And um, actually, I just found out from JD White. If you go and watch our uh, my other video with JD White Coffee Conversations, um, he said that they will put it on Barnes and Noble for you too. So I went and I found one of my books, but I mm. got to figure out. And we're going to work on that, too. So that's another thing. People helping people. Authors helping authors. <laughs> He's helping me with all of the social media stuff, and I'm going to help you with the Barnes & Noble stuff. Mm. So Yeah. Um, so that was pretty much, that's where I started. Okay. And then I was like, oh, it would be cool if I could get this in, like, a local store. Right. So I just Googled bookstores in the town because I didn't, mm -hmm. other than Barnes & Noble, I didn't know any. Right. And then I was like, oh, Ferguson is a place. And, oh, this place sells books? I didn't know that. Right, right. And so I started reaching out to them being like, hi, you know, I'm a local regional author. I have a book coming out. I'd like to sell it here. Is that possible? They were also super easy to work with. They're right. Just, they're just like, yeah, bring your book in. We'll have you fill out a piece of paper and that's it. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. There you go. <laughs> so you just never know. Uh, so any future plans? Mm. So I'm working on a new book. Called, um, and it mentions it at the end because I have like a little what projects am I working on now? Oh, yeah, and yep. it's on my website too where I update it. Yep. But I'm working on my next book I'm working on is called Theodin.exe, which is a like future cyberpunk type story. Okay. And it's about um, a prince named Theo from the Kingdom of Fairy. He's in a like terrible car accident when he's a kid. Okay. Where he like loses all of his limbs. Oh, but wow. Through like modern. Uh, technology and sciences that they have they're able to give him essentially like cyborg parts right and he has what's called living metal so it like grows with him as he grows up oh, wow. and it allows him to still like feel human touch and connection right, right, so right. it gives him a pretty normal life um, and so he's in high school and you know he's also a prince but he uh, there's a sickness going around that starts affecting only the meadows which are people who have metal work done on them right and nobody knows what's going on, but all these meadows start to get sick. Mm. And that's kind of all I really want to say about okay. the plot. I don't all have right. the book done yet, but I am planning for it to be a six-book series. And the series is going to be called The Cybernetic Rebirth. Oh, that sounds exciting. So, uh, yeah, definitely you're going to be back here and we're going to be talking about that stuff, too. <laughs> um, so, it's just a little update on me, too, for my uh, future plans. I am working on my second book in my Sinister series, book two, called The Farmhouse. Hmm. Um, and that one is more of a paranormal uh, thriller about a woman in her 40s who has to go back to her childhood home um, and kind of face her demons. Um, she was terrified and had a reoccurring nightmare for her whole life hmm. about that farmhouse when she was growing up because she saw a ghost there. Yeah. And it was a little boy at the end of her bed and he'd never say anything, but he'd always just be there watching her and, hmm. and then she'd wake up or she wasn't sure if she was a dream, dreaming or if she was actually awake. And it, it, more or less in her nightmare, she finds herself back at the farmhouse and she's alone. And she has to deal with this on her own. Well, in, in, in real life, <laughs> <laughs> in real life, uh, her dad um, has a stroke and has to, you know, they, he has to sell the family farm or they have to figure out what they're going to do because he's, he's going to have to retire. So her and her sisters go back to the family farm to just decide what needs to be done and, you know, how the next steps. Anyway, she gets there first, a storm hits, and her nightmare comes true. She is stuck in this farmhouse oh, by no. herself during the snowstorm. And it's just about her reliving all of the things that happened in her past. Mm -hmm. You're going to hear about some... You know, she was plagued by ghosts and, you know, seeing things her whole life. And you're going to hear some of those stories and her just kind of working through, is this real or is it just a part of an active imagination of a child? Yeah. Now that she's grown up, she has to face that. So that's what the farmhouse is going to be about. That's well, all I'm going to say on that. You might like this book then. <laughs> <laughs> well, there I you go. I think it's really close to that one. <laughs> Um, okay, so let's talk about imposter syndrome. Mm, okay, so I talk about this pretty extensively. And uh, um, if you don't know what imposter syndrome is, don't feel bad. I think there's a generational gap 
between who understands what it is and who doesn't. Okay. Uh, my wife's uncle, I told him, he's like, how's your book writing going? I'm like, oh, my imposter syndrome is so bad right now. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I'm a successful millionaire. I don't know what that is. And I'm like, cool, cool, cool. Well, <laughs> so imposter syndrome comes from, um, it, can take, it can take on a bunch of different forms depending on the person. Okay. For most people, like the umbrella term I'll use, is it's when you deserve to be in a space, mm -hmm. but you don't think you deserve to be in a space. Um, so like, okay. I wrote a book. Right. I'm a published author, right? Right, right. But I don't feel like an author, and I'm I'm a bad writer, and I shouldn't write books. <laughs> <laughs> that sort of That's, where it comes yes, in, yes. and it like you know it can be your own self esteem, your seasonal depression can kick in and affect mm -hmm. it, bad reviews, or like I wrote a book and no one in my family will read it, so I guess I'm a sucky writer. Type right, thing. right. Like all those things can like eat away at you, and I probably deal with imposter syndrome like every other week. <laughs> <laughs> I think I How do you get before. out of it? How do you get out of it? Those um, people who want to write a book and they're like, no, I, I, I have no business. I'm not, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not a writer. Yeah. So what I would say is you are your own worst enemy. And the sooner you can realize that, the better. Mm -hmm. uh, you, if you want to write a book, you deserve to be in the book space. You deserve to write. Mm -hmm. Your stories want to be heard by people, even if you think they don't. I don't think anyone wants to read this book, but I'm always like floored. <laughs> I'm always floored by people who like pick it up or start reading it and then they like, DM me on Instagram being like, oh, I'm reading this and I'm really, like, I was really surprised by this or I really like this. Uh -huh. And I'm like, oh, thank you. That makes my heart so happy. Because, yes. uh, I'm really, in, like, I'm really insecure, but I usually don't uh, say that out loud. <laughs> it's okay. This is a safe space. <laughs> yeah. So, like, uh, I on my Instagram, I try to be really honest about that to normalize the conversation about, like, emotions and feelings and imposter syndrome. So, that I would say, being able to acknowledge when it's happening is mm -hmm. your first big step. Like, oh, are these intrusive thoughts right now from right, myself? Right, right. Are, oh. yeah, are these positive or are they negative? Are they going to help me moving forward or are they holding me back? You know? Yeah, and a lot of the time I think it shackles people. Right. So when you get into that mindset, the things that I do is I try to remind myself I'm not on a timetable. I, I don't have to get my next book out tomorrow. I don't right. have to finish my stuff. Today, I'm going to play video games and I'm going to order a bunch of pizzas or <laughs> go. I'm going to binge watch Netflix and yes. not do anything. Yes. And society will tell you, oh, you shouldn't do that. You're lazy. But I think the younger society will tell you that's acceptable. Yeah. It's okay. Put yourself first. Your mental and emotional health are just as important right. as your physical health. Right. So that's sort of uh, what imposter syndrome is and how I try to deal with it because gotcha. I do suffer from it often <laughs> okay um you know dealing with that imposter syndrome i'm going to tell you something that helped me along i uh, actually wrote my first couple of books um well the that universe one and um the uh, the boy in the magical shell i actually wrote them uh, the, it's called a mermaid's tale it's on uh, amazon too and that one's under tl york and <clears throat> but anyway those two i wrote them as movies because mm -hmm. I wanted to be a movie, I wanted to be a movie writer. I wanted to do screenplays, and um, I bought uh, the final draft like software that they yep. use in Hollywood and everything. Mm -hmm. And I went to Hollywood a couple times, and I actually met the guy that wrote uh, *Lethal Weapon*. Oh, cool! And he was, I was in a you know a, a class with him, and he was talking about you know how do you write, how do you mm -hmm. write, and he gave some of the best advice that I I still live. By today and how I get these book after book after book done is I keep him in my mind. He said, okay, when you're writing a book, mm -hmm. the number one thing is um, if you have kind of a scheme and how you see it happening, write it down. Write it mm -hmm. down so you kind of have a, like a short story of, you know, who is going to be the main character, who's going to be the nemesis, mm -hmm. who, you know, what is that big character flaw, you know, what big tragedy is going to happen that he has to come over, you know, overcome. And then, um, and then how is he going to get over that? And then how is, how is it going to end? And if you don't know the ending, it's okay. It will write itself once yep. you get in there. Um, but you know, just jot down. And when you do this, it might change, yeah, yeah. but, but at least it gets your, your, uh, your own nemesis, your imposter syndrome. Mm. It's like, no, I, I can see, I can see the goals. I can see where it's going. You know, I'm going to keep writing. And then if it goes off, well, hey, that might actually be better anyway. So, yeah. but it just kind of it kind of tricks your mind into thinking that it's already written, so you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I do know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, um, but then it might change as you go along. Mm -hmm. But, um, I mean, no, he said his number one thing he did, and this is not me. And he was a morning. He got up at six o'clock every morning, grabbed his coffee, sat down, 
and started typing or writing, mm. even if it was just for 10 minutes. He just made himself mm. get into that space at the same time every day. And that part I did take to heart. Same time every day, 10 a.m. for me was mm. my writing time. You know, I'd take care of my pets, get my coffee, and then just sit down and just to write a paragraph, mm. you know? And then sometimes I look and it's two o'clock in the afternoon. I started at 10 and I worked till two. And then other days it's like, no, I'm just not feeling it. I wrote a sentence. But I did it. Yeah. And oh, then that's there's, okay. You showed yeah, up. Yeah, you showed up. And then that was my, that's how I just kind of pushed through. Because me personally, I've got so many other things that I, you guys know I'm a multipreneur. I'm also a massage therapist. I also help with editing and helping other people with their books. So if you need help with your book, get a hold of me. Really love your life at Gmail. Um, but uh, yeah, to write is hard. Mm -hmm. It's it yeah you get in your way all the time like oh and and I really want you know but um, but no having that schedule and just seeing him with his cup of coffee going oh I don't want to do this and sitting down <laughs> and and him just saying but that's how I you know and I thought you know what yeah just kind of get out of your own way sit down for five minutes and then okay I did it I did it now I can feel good about myself and then that guilt and that negative feedback. You know, oh, you're not a good writer. Oh, you're not, you know, you're not going to do this. You know, kind of gets shut up because yeah. you did show up <laughs> and you did do something. So, yeah. Um, so, okay. So next thing we were going to talk about is social media. Mm. Um, where There's to go. To talk about here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we might, we might actually just do an, I'm not actually going to probably, we're just going to do a little synopsis right now, but I will uh, shut this off and then we're going to do a second part two on just social media so the people that want to watch about social media can come back and and just watch that so mm -hmm. um but just giving you a, what what do you use for social media for your books and um so i use um i use instagram and i use tiktok and i use twitch those are my like three main platforms that i live on i'm on okay. twitch i'm on twitch every single day of the week but i broadcast five days a week Okay. On TikTok, my videos are up and down, uh, but I make more like vloggy style content there. Okay. And then on Instagram, it's books and video games. Okay. Because I'm really trying to like smash those two points home, being like, hey, if you like books, you might like this video game. Right, <laughs> right. You like this and video a video game, game you, you might like this book. book. Oh, yeah. That, and that's on Twitch. That's on Instagram. Oh, that's on Instagram. Yeah. Oh, sorry. See, I wasn't even listening. Uh, that was actually something, some of the reviews <laughs> I got were like, I felt like I was reading a video game. Okay. And so I was like, thanks, because I plotted out a video game and then wrote this book. <laughs> there you go. See? You did that whole, like I said. The, exactly like you like said. Like what yeah. I said earlier. Okay. Yeah. So those are my three social medias. Okay. Um, um, what do you think about Reddit? Do you know anything about Reddit? I see that people find stuff on Reddit all the time. Mm -hmm. If any of you guys know anything about Reddit and you want to come on and talk about Reddit, I would love to have you here. So just because I don't know a whole lot either about that one. Um, I also am on LinkedIn, mm. uh, which is a business app, you know, um, yeah. and then most younger people can see Twitter. I have Twitter too, um, which I always just put basically a link there to my videos and that's about it. But, yeah. but I think that's all we're going to say. Now mm. we're going to go to the social media talk with Charles Edwin after this, if you want to learn more about that. But anyway, I just want to thank you for coming today. Yeah, Did you have me. any... Anything, any last words or any inspiration you want to <laughs> leave with people? Um, I would encourage you that if, if you want to be a writer, even if you're just working on a project, go ahead and do it. Yeah. And you can take it just slow. Just do it. You can take baby steps. There's no timeline. Yep. Do it all on your own. And if you want to be part of normalizing that conversation, I post about it on my Instagram constantly, especially in my stories. Okay. So we're always sorry. And what are you on Instagram? What's Charles your... Edwin Books. Okay. Is what my Instagram is. Even before okay. we started shooting, I quickly did a, hey, I'm at the studio. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, everyone, have a great week, and we will see you again soon. Bye. Bye. Hopefully that stopped. <laughs> <laughs> and if it didn't, I'll just stop Emmanuel, and then I'll edit it. Nope, it didn't stop.